and students sitting and experiencing the building from any aspect realize just by looking around, first of all, how the building is put together, they understand how it works, and they basically understand how materials touch each other. Dean, the college is coming up on its 50th anniversary. The University of Arizona College of Architecture and Landscape Architecture has always dealt with green and sustainable uh, issues long before those two words ever became in vogue. Yes. Uh, well, for the last 50 years, Brad, we've been uh, talking about design as our principle. And uh, years ago, even 40 years ago when I joined the faculty, uh, we talked about all the things we talk about today. We just didn't call them sustainable and we didn't call them green. They were just good, logic, logical, sensible design having to do with context, having to do with site orientation, having to do with the integration of landscape uh, and, and uh, logical materials within the building, exposure, heat gain, heat loss. These are all the things we talk about today. We, we did the same thing 40 years ago. There's going to be another phase, an exciting new phase in this building. I'd like you to uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, I'm underway now with the, with the green roof. Uh, we have a 10 kilowatt system donated, uh, about $100,000 worth of photovoltaic cells that are going to be installed. There, we're designing the system to elevate those so they become a, both, uh, a shade structure for, for functional activities below. Uh, the entire green roof is very close to being able to start. Uh, all the plant materials are available, irrigation, uh, wa uh, water collection, water harvesting. Dean, the article talked about your laboratories. You have world-class, state-of-the-art workshops running the entire length of the building, their exterior as well as interior. Uh, students have 24-hour access to those uh, laboratories. Can you expound on those a little bit? Absolutely. Every aspect of our curriculum has to do with laboratories. is an interconnected and, and integrally related to it. When students enter the second year, which is the beginning of their four-year professional phase, uh, they, they are involved with uh, laboratory studies. Virtually all of our studios require uh, construction, implementation of the materials. Students test their ideas. They build them full scale. Uh, they're able to investigate new materials. Uh, they're looking at uh, areas of compression, areas of tension. They're, they're finding and discovering new ways of using old materials and learning about materials that are not yet uh, integral to our building systems. Dean, thank you very much for meeting with us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you, Brad. We're on the third floor east end of the building. We're in the Graduate Emerging Materials Studio. I'm with Professor Larry Medlin, Director of the Architecture portion of the College of Architecture and Landscape Architecture. Larry, thank you for meeting with us. Brad, it's a pleasure. You have various aspects to the College of Architecture and Landscape Architecture that are now utilizing this facility. Yes. The, uh, uh, one of the real advantages is it, it works for uh, a all of the different components of the college and, and the school. For example, the Drachman uh, Design Build Coalition, which is a part of the Drachman Institute through which architecture and landscape architecture students and faculty uh, develop and build projects. There's a Savano project in which two houses are building, being built right now. But in the preparation for those houses, they were able to uh, facilitate and construct detailed mock-ups for those to test some of the final detailing for the project. And now that they're into the design, build, construction phase, they're even prefabricating some of the components for that. In the Emerging Materials Laboratory that you see us standing in here, there's all kinds of, there's, there's a traditional uh, metal shop and there's a traditional set of wood shop, but there's all kinds of specialty shops for working. One of the research projects is ceramics. There's places for working with that, with fiberglass and glass. So there's all kinds of, of resources that provide, uh, uh, even with the beginning students, to study and familiarize themselves with some of those materials, apply it to their design projects, to graduate students who are doing some of the most sophisticated innovation and explorations in their research with some of those materials. It's no coincidence that with this new building, you're attracting some rather uh, well-known alumni to return to the program. 
uh, that's true. For example, this semester, the, the uh, visitor studio, Rick Joy, is, is doing that, but it's not just Rick Joy. It's the members of his studio that are also participating in that. And that's one of the interesting things about the building. Uh, uh, for Rick Joy and all of our alumni, there's a whole series of new resources and materials and, and technologies that are available that our students have actually developed a very high level of expertise that are even not familiar to some of the alumni. So it's a real incentive for them to stay connected to the school and come back and share and learn some of these new technologies that are evolving. Very good, Professor. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. We're on the fourth floor of the building. We're in the Archon Seminar Conference Room. I'm talking to Professor Dick Williams, Professor Emeritus, FAIA. Professor Williams, thank you for meeting with us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Professor Williams had a career at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Professor Williams is a distinguished visiting professor of architecture here at the University of Arizona. Professor Williams, you designed and contributed, donated, and because of you, we're here in the Archon conference space. Yes, the, the School of Architecture and Landscape Architecture and Planning were coming together, but we didn't have a specific place to gather for planning and for strategic uh, sense of direction and for bringing in clients from various communities and from those within the universities who are looking ahead at what growth and change in Arizona can be and more particularly and more generally of arid lands anywhere in the world. And now that we have the space we're undergoing uh, a wonderful period of adjusting and finding it how it's inspirational for jury meetings, for decisions about curriculum. Professor, the Archon Seminar Room, actually we are floating upon the roof of the architecture building. That's correct. And um, using the, the roofscape is, raises a few technical questions of how do you permit drainage of a roof surface and yet have a usable interior space and usual exterior space. So we're really riding on little pedestals of precast concrete floor so that uh, we float, so to speak, above the, the membrane that is the waterproof membrane on a slope uh, beneath us. Uh, and that, of course, will be carried on in the, the rest of the roof area as we develop terraces and energy collection, collecting uh, devices, shaded areas and so on for uh, roof landscape features. Professor Dick Williams, Emeritus, FAIA, thanks again for meeting with us and for everything you've done for uh, architecture. Glad to be here, Brad. Thank you. Gentlemen, tell me a little bit about your practice. How is it uh, doing projects in the desert southwest? Well, I, we've been doing it since 1973, and uh, there are still lessons to be learned, and, and that's part of the, you know, the passion, how the passion stays, because there's always new issues, new programs, new building types. Congratulations on a fine building, Brian Farling. Brad. Eddie Jones. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate it. So, from the University of Arizona College of Architecture and Landscape Architecture, I'm Bradley Wheeler for architecturefilms.com. So long. <laughs>